Hi everybody, hello, hello. Hopefully this is working today. Alex is gonna to check to make sure that we are actually going live. We going live, Al? Yes, it's live. It is live? Have we got anybody watching? Not yet. Has the counter started? That, there we go, there there's go. the notification. We don't know what happened yesterday, poor Sarah. <laughs> she was chattering away to you all, and yeah, it didn't work, did it? <laughs> but we got there in the end, which is fab. Um, so happy, happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, it's a nice day here today. It's cold in the house, but it's lovely out there today. You can definitely feel like spring might be finally, finally on its way. I can't wait for summer on it. I just want to, I just need some warmth, warmth in my bones. Um, we've been saying I've been busy, busy. We've just about, we're just about ready for the craft store tomorrow. Um, I'm traveling up tonight. Um, so I'm going to be leaving probably about four ish or so, leaving the boys in charge um, here. So, uh, cause they're quite early. Well, not early, it's 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. tomorrow so um so i'm doing that so traveling up to peterborough tonight uh <coughs> oh excuse me um what else have we been doing oh we've been looking at shows as well looks like there might be towards the end of the year a few shows happening so um we've been looking at the calendar to see which ones we can fit in which ones we can't and stuff um and which ones are going to be next year now so um so yeah it's been busy all day busy all morning in the shop so who's coming online who's coming to say hello today We've got hellos from uh, <laughs> Sheila, Grace, Jean, Kate, Nikki, Leslie, Jackie. Oh, lovely. Hi, everybody. Excuse me. Sorry, it's because I sneezed. My nose is all running now. So I probably just smeared lipstick everywhere as well now. <laughs> um, so we're going to, obviously it's Wednesday, so we're going to do block of the week. And we're going to have a little go at this. We're going to have a little go at these big hexagons, um, which are perfect for a, a layer cake. And perfect if you've got big prints that you want to keep that print. You don't want to chop it all up. So we're going to go through that in a minute. But I've got some new bits to show you. So these have come in. These are little fat quarter bundles. Now, we, there's not ones we've put together. These are ready fat quartered for you. They're from the Craft Co Cotton Company. And we've got two little two little bundles. We've got one that's called Blender Spots. So I was just going to come down now. So there's a lovely green. And I like the fact that the spots are quite irregular and they're different colours as well. You've got like double colours on the spots. An orange, beautiful sort of fuchsia, and a royal blue and then a turquoise. And they are, there's five in a set and then $9.99. Okay, so they are on the website already, those ones. And then this one's called Animal Delights. And I really like this one. Look, you've got little frogs and there's dragonflies on that one. Um, flip this over. I quite like the fact you've got that dragonflies are um, like a draw, drawn line one. Um, little cats on blue. Um, what else have we got there? Oh, this little cats, dogs, and mice on that one. Really cute little animal prints. Giraffes. And then, oh, I'm going to flip that one over, can't I? And then you've got toucans on the back. Again, five fat quarters for $9.99. So a nice, nice price on those. And then these came in as well. If you're on Instagram earlier, um, you might have seen these. We did a, li a little video, a little reel on these. Um, and these are new from Moda. It's called Whis uh, Whisper Metallic. And there's a gold one and a silver one. They are junior jelly rolls. So it's 21 strips, not 42 like normal. But they are stunning. I'm absolutely loving, loving, loving these. I like a bit of monochrome anyway, and I like a bit of metallic. So you can see you've got all these beautiful, I don't know if you can get these, beautiful um, patterns in there, in the blacks. But they've got that lovely, lovely metallic, loving that one, like a scribble. Tiny little dot and all in there. So, and that looks like um, like jumping jacks. That's what, you know, that game used to play. Knuckles, was it? Jumping jacks? Like that and there. So you've got a gold one and then you've got exactly the same in the silver. And I can't decide which one I need. Can't decide if I need a gold one or a silver one, but I am really, really, I love that one. Really, oh, and that one, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, really loving these. Really, really loving these. So, and they are, again, they're on the website already and they're $19.99. Okay. Um, Beth's been busy putting some bits on the website for us. So there are a few more bits in the clearance section and there's a few more bits on the job lots as well. So, um, so lots to keep you occupied. Lots and lots to keep you occupied. So, what are we going to do? Anybody got any questions or comments or anything there before we get started? Uh, there's some more hellos from Heather, Wendy, hi Heather, hi Linda, Wendy, Pauline. Wendy, Pauline, hello everybody. Hi, hi, hi. So, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a little go at this, um, 
this hexagon quilt. We have done it as a class and it's a lot easier than people think it is. Um, it does use Y seams, but I'm going to show you how to do those. They're not as hard as people think. Um, and I like the fact, even though you've got to use a Y seam for them, um, you can do big hexagons like this, but you always uh, you can do it without any Y seams, but you, you have to do them in halves um, and then you sew the rows together. But it means that you've always got a join right down the centre of your hexes, okay? And I like the fact that these aren't. These are complete patterns. I haven't got any seams showing or anything like that. And it's, it's genuinely not as hard as people think it's going to be. So I'm going to be using one of Andy from Craft UK's templates. We have got some of these on our website. Um, you might already have it. It's the half hexy, the 10 inch half hexy ruler. Okay. This one has got actually a half hexy and a five inch, which is perfect for a charm square. So you could do this with a charm pack which fits in there, okay? And I'm gonna cut both out for you, all right? So I can, you can, I can show you how, how to do them. Um, I do like the fact he's got non-slip bits on them, they're brilliant. Um, but you might have this ruler, so this is a nice one for, for this. And it's quite a quick quilt as well. There's not, not lots of fiddly piece in. Um, and I'm using um, the Figs and Shirtin layer cake, which is all these lovely bright sort of yellows and, um, you know, What's that sort of like a lovely corally orange? You've got lovely fresh green in all in there and blues and all sorts. Okay, some red, all sorts in there. So that's what I'm going to use today. Um, I've already cut a couple, but I thought we'd go through about how to cut them. Okay, so 10 inch square. This ruler is obviously designed for a layer cake. Um, it's a half hexy and you want a hexy. So we're going to fold them in half. You can, when you get a bit, you know, clever with this, do two, three, four at a time. I, I normally cut about four at a time for quickness, um, but you can do them individually if you want, all right? So we're gonna cut this one, we're gonna fold this in half, we're gonna fold them right sides together, uh, wrong sides together, like that, okay? Give it a good sort of finger press just to make sure it's all nice and sat as it should be. Now on the ruler, I don't know if you can sit, um, I need to put something a little bit dark behind it, don't I? Hang on. Um, Hang on. Oh, hang on. This might work. This piece of cardboard here. I don't know if, uh, you might be able to see that. Yeah. Okay. You've got you've got an internal line here. Okay, which is a quarter inch away from the edge of the ruler. Okay, we're going to be using that line for marking up as well. All right. But we're going to line the, the fold of the layer cake up on that line. Okay. So you've got little dots in the edge there, and we're going to be using that line. Okay. You don't want to line it up on the edge of the ruler. OK, so I'm trying to do this towards you, actually. So here's the fold of my fabric like that. I'm going to put that line that we were just talking about right along the edge. Like that. OK, so we're not using the edge of the ruler, we're using the line and then we're going to cut round it. So I'm going to stand up to do this. I hold that nice and steady, get my weight right over my rotary cutter and cut that edge along that one like that okay and then i'm gonna have to turn it i'm gonna have to turn it towards me to get to the the one sorry girls <laughs> ladies and gents line that ruler back up on that fold like that so i am cutting on the edge of the ruler along these edges but the it's just on the line on the fold okay and then i'm gonna go up that edge there okay like that really nice and quick and i've got hex skins cut perfectly all right you can like i was saying you can use that internal piece on a charm pack so that's a, just a square out of the charm pack and i can do exactly the same oh where is it there it is there's the little bit okay so again i can fold that one in half give that a good finger press and doing exactly the same line in that dotty line on like that i'm not going to stand up for this one so you could do smaller versions if you've got charm packs you want to use up, okay? And you've got perfect hexes like that, okay? Nice and easy, but we're going to use the, the layer cake today. Okay, I'll just move all these bits. Anybody got any questions? Anybody saying hello? Anybody telling me anything? Just while I get myself organised. Um, Taryn said the metallics are lovely. Oh, they really are. 
Yeah, I really can't decide whether I want a silver one or a gold one. Oh, you might all buy them before I get a chance to get one. <laughs> uh, there's hellos from Kay, Carol, hi, Kay. Hi, Carol. and Christine. Hi, Christine. Hello, hello, hello. So we've got some hexes ready cut. Okay, we're now going to use those lines again on this ruler. Okay, now you don't have to. You could. I think we've got a paper template, but I mean to be honest, this makes life so much easier. You could use a ruler to mark these lines on. But this ruler's got it all on it for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over and we need to mark our quarter inch, our sewing lines, basically, onto this. This is one of the few times I wouldn't actually use a Frixon. Now, I did start to mark them up on here and realised I used a Frixon, which is going to be a real pain because you're going to be ironing them and then you lose your lines. So I'm going to use just a little water erasable pen, but you could use your Roxanne chalk pencils or we've got some really nice, you know those pens you used to have at school where you clicked down the colours? We've got some of those in chalk pencils which have got different colours in them as well. Those are really good. And you want to use that line again that we were talking about a minute ago to mark up your squares. So I'm putting that line, um, let me try and do it so that you guys can see it. Oh, just lost the lid of my pen. I'm trying to get this on a grey bit so you can see it easily going to put that line right on that edge that I've just cut out like that and mark down okay and you're going to work your way around so this is like cut, cut out all your hexes and then sit in front of the telly with a cup of tea and it's quite nice then just to sit and mark in all your lines now you can do this without the marking but it's difficult frankly it's awkward and I just find it so much easier just to spend the, a few minutes marking up my uh, hexagons like that, okay? Just to just to give myself a fighting chance, all right? Let me just grab the lid of my pen. So I dropped it. Any questions or comments there? So I'll just because I'm going to do another couple. So while I'm while I'm marking up, talk to me, please, ladies. Um, Carol says hello. Hi, Carol. Uh, June says, Mr. Bit, as my friend called. Ah, oh, lovely. Um, oh, not that you missed it. Lovely that your friend called. <laughs> those are the only two who've come in since then. Okay, there. cool. Right, so I presume you're all, you're all still with me at the moment, okay? I know people hate Y scenes, but I think once you've done a few, they're not as horrendous as you think they are. The lid of that pen doesn't want to lie on there, okay? So I'm going to just mark up this one as well, okay? And I'm going to mark up one more just so that we've got them, because I really don't want to use the fricks on ones, because <laughs> it's all going to it's all going to come off the minute I iron it. I got to remark those. So, you know I use fricks on pencil most marking, but there are times when you've got lots of ironing to do. The amount of times I've marked things up and then ironed it and then thought, ugh, no. And you can see I'm marking corner to corner so that I've got these little cross points here. That point there is going to be really important, okay? That little where those lines cross. That point there is the thing we're going to be looking for, okay? Um, has anybody done one of these sorts of quilts? Has anybody worked on one of these before? Have any, has anybody, how, how do you all feel about Y scenes? Are you all like running for the hills now? Because I mentioned the dreaded Y scene. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start really... So I would then mark up all my hexes okay and i would put them out in rows so we're going to just put three together and then we're going to put another three together you can see up on the quilt behind me you do need on the end of rows to put some halves in to straighten it off okay but we'll uh, we'll get to that in a minute okay you can see there's like half hexes here okay you're just going to cut them in half and use them okay so pins again you know i don't pin definitely pin for this okay We'll put them right sides together and those little crossing points that I was talking about earlier, I'm going to put a pin right through that point there, okay, and find it on the other side, where is it, like that. Now I don't put my pins all the way through until I've got this lined up to make, because otherwise it, it can distort it a little, bit, a little bit. And I'm going to do that end there, so that point there through to that one there like that and then I like to put one through the middle so I'm going to go through that line there make sure it's hitting the line on that side and at this point 
I will then pin them. Okay, so got a pin in there. Uh, how many nests? Uh, I don't know what Y seams are. Okay, but well that's what we're going to be doing now, lovely, is a Y seam. Okay, yes. basically it's a way of fitting in um, three angles. So if you imagine you've got shapes where you want them to fit in like that. Okay, this is the Y seam. So we're going to be sewing down one there, but you need to leave some gaps so that you can get these two seams in. So can you imagine there's your, your hexes like that? Okay, it's how you get these seams here to fit in, which is why it's a, a Y. Okay, so we're going to stitch from this point here, okay, there to that point there you are not going to stitch into your seam allowance okay with a y seam it's really really important that you don't stitch into that bit because you can't get the next one to fit in if you do and you've only got to unpick it so i'm going to drop my needle in here i'm going to stitch along and i'm going to stop it that pin there okay so i'm going to whip over to the machine well not whip we're going to saunter over to the machine and do that so I'm going to drop my needle right in on that point and do a little lock stitch. Now, if you reverse and I would reverse it the start and beginning of these, if you, you know, if you do a back stitch, make sure you're not doing the back stitch. Take a couple of stitches first and then back stitch. Don't go into that seam allowance. OK, and then I'm going to come down that line. Now, I'm just using my normal fit. I'm not using a quarter inch foot because I'm following a line. I'm not having to measure it. Okay, so I'm going to go down that line, follow that line. When I come to the end, slow down a little bit so I can stop on that point and then lock stitch or reverse. Okay, there we go. Okay, so sewn down there like that. Let me get all these bits out of the way. You can then iron it to one side, all right, which is why you don't want to fricks on because you do need to iron them in between. Okay, <laughs> like that. And I've got my first two hexes joined. Just give it a little little press from the front as well. Okay, I would then add another hexy over here. So it's my next one in the row. It's going in like that. So I'm going to do right sides together and we're going to do exactly the same. And you would join them in a row, however many you want. All right, so again, I'm going to do that. So find that point there, the point on the other side, like that. Same again this side, so find that point. See, can you see it's way off there? So let's get that point. Where is it? There it is, there. Okay, give it a wiggle to make sure it all fits. And then through the center, line to line, which it is now. Okay, any questions, any comments there, Al? Um, Taryn says, I think I'm going to use my moody broom fabric for this. Ooh. They have some lovely big prints. Oh, yeah, because they're all really big prints, aren't they, in that? this, Yeah, it really showcases. I, I like this pattern, and I've done it a few times because it really shows off those prints because you're not cutting little tiny bits. So if you've got a bigger print one, it's fab for that. I'm going to sew down that one again. Okay, so I'm going to drop my needle in there. Do, I, do you need to move some of that stuff out of the way? You're all right, love. <laughs> lock stitch it okay because we're going to be manipulating the seams in a minute it's one of the few times i do 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 a, a bit of a lock stitch or a, a reverse or a reverse wow my it's not working today that makes a change <laughs> there we go all the way down like that get down to that one there and then i'm going to lock stitch that one Cut my thread. So I'm only going to put three in a row and then I'm going to do another three so that, well, I'm actually going to drop one in just to show you the Y seam. Um, obviously, because I wouldn't put all nine in a row, we'd be here for hours and hours and hours. Okay, so again, I'm going to just iron that one out so that I've got them. Doesn't matter, if they're going opposite ways, it doesn't matter, you can do them all the same way. As long as they're to one side, it'll work. All right, so I'm going to pretend that that's my row finished. I'm going to very quickly put these three together, okay? So you're going to have to talk to me, ladies, because I've got to do a bit of sewing. <laughs> Get these ready. Um, okay. Carol said, uh, I had a go at this about two years ago. Oh, lovely. After your demo, hopefully I will be able to finish it. Oh, cool. <clears throat> oh, yeah, who's got some uh, 
UFOs on the go that they really need to get finished. I'm mainly getting out of control. I've got to, I've got to get on it. I really do. <coughs> Excuse me, frog in my throat. So and I have been busy this morning as well planning June's. Uh, I keep saying a chant of June's craft show stores to, uh, shows too. We're um, we're already starting to work on those as well. So I'm going to go back over here. Oh, and so this one. Okay. Um, let's drop that into there. You're right there, Al. Mm. Yeah. Gimbal playing it. Gonna so I'm going to go right up on that point, and we're going to go down that line and take that pin out as I go. Genius. Mm -hmm. Will you be doing any more Zoom classes? We will be doing some more Zooms. That's something that we were actually only talking about yesterday. I'm going to be sorting those out in the next couple of weeks to do some more Zooms. Um, there you go, and then I'm just going to put. I'm not going to iron this one, I'm going to finger press it because I did fricks on. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to add this one on this side just so that I've got, got them ready. Okay, yes. Um, so this that's actually a really good question, ladies. Is there a Zoom class you would like us to put on? Is there something that you thought, think, oh, I've seen this, um, I want to have a go at it? Is there a class that we've previously done that you didn't get a chance to go on? That you would like us to go on drop us a message if there's something there that you you know you want to want to have a go at let us know because there's you know we're doing the zoom classes for you guys so you know if there's something there that you want it's it's better that you tell us okay so you know is there anything there you fancy having a go at or a technique or you know a pattern that you've seen that you think all oh, right okay that's that's what i want that's what i want to have a go at um let us know okay We're hoping that from sort of June time we might be able to have our classes. I think June the twenty first is a possibility that we might be able to have our our little day classes happening again in the shop, which would be nice. So, like I said, I'm not going to uh, actually. Let me grab my crease, turn the creaser thing. There we go. I'm just going to um, use a, a creaser for this one because I don't want those lines to go. Because I, I feel stupidly thought oh yeah yeah it's fine I'll draw them out and then realized I'd used a, a fricks on okay there we go just finger press that one out so imagine your rows are put together and now I can I can drop these in so you can see you want them to fit here and this is this is actually facing you this is the Y seam can you see like a letter Y so it's this seam here from there to there okay that's what we're looking, concentrating on I'll grab my pins back Okay. and then we're going to start by looking at this seam here okay so you would start on your row and look at this first seam here I'm going to flip it right sides together and this is why you don't sew into the seam allowance because I need this maneuverability here okay and I'm going to find that point there like that and I'm going to find the point there okay which should be right at the top of that seam just there i don't know if you can see that oh, i've gone quite over oh there we go like that so it's at the top of that seam but i've got this maneuverability because that seam allowance isn't sewn okay so i'm going to do that one there first and then i'm going to do the same here so i'm going to drop that one into there and through there and then one through the center and again, this is where we're going to stitch now, exactly as we did before, from that point all the way along. And you're going to stop at that point. You don't want to sew over it because you're going to be sewn into your wrong hexi. OK, so let me just get that nice and tucked in. Have I just put that in correctly? Yes, I have. So I'm just double checking. Can you see as well, like the row looks odd at the moment because this is coming off at an angle. But it, that's as it should be. Just double checking myself then. <laughs> Back over we go, and we're going to sew that seam. So I'm going to drop my needle right in on that cross, lock it off, and then stitch down that line. And like that, all the way to the end, and be really careful to actually stop on that cross. Like that. And then I can reverse back. There we go. Okay. 
so we've sewn that one there okay now if i open this out now you can see that i've got hopefully you can see i've got this bit, bit of like maneuverability here okay because those seam allowances aren't done so i'm just gonna just gently finger press that one and now i want to join this one to this one okay so this is going to come over like that and flip it out we're going to do exactly the same so i'm going to find that point there like that tuck this little piece out of the way okay can you see so i don't want that to be trapped in that seam so i'm kind of pulled this seam allowance bit out of the way so i found tuck it back with your finger find that cross there that cross there like that okay and then there's my pins Ooh. i'm going to come along this edge like that find that cross there so i want to push that one that way for now like that and find oh where is it there we go trying to do it to camera for you <laughs> there we go like that and then i want one in the center so how many layer cakes have you got hidden away ladies are you a, a pre-cutter or do you like a pre-cut have you all got pretty layer cakes there you think oh it's so pretty i don't know what to do with it lovely little pattern this one to do it with okay so again now i'm going to stitch that line there okay there we go but let's do a challenge post let's do a challenge post for over the weekend um what could we do so can you see oh, sorry can you see that this one's kind of folded in half at the minute which is good because i want it out of the way you see it, it's kind of folded over on itself which i know means i'm doing the right thing and i've made sure that one's tucked out of the way okay um right so we'll do a challenge post and i will put together a little prize let's do it on should we do it on pre-cuts show me what you've made out of pre-cuts whether it's a charm pack or a layer cake or a, a jelly roll or a mini charm um have you bought pre-cut hexes have you bought a pack of pre-cut hexes and, and made a quilt um yeah show me show me your pre-cuts um you could just show me a sneaky picture of all the layer cakes and or jelly rolls you've got in your stash you know it doesn't have to be something you've made you know play around with it but show me your pre-cuts and i'll put a challenge post on when i get back and then on monday we'll do it over the weekend then on monday we'll um we'll do a little draw okay because we haven't got a one o'clock tomorrow because i'm on the craft store the craft store and um he says in the shop by herself so um it's just a bit difficult um, and hopefully you'll all be watching me at one o'clock anyway um there we go can you see now that that's gone in like that right i'm gonna iron this little bit now i know i'm gonna lose my, my lines but i'm gonna iron this one so you can see how that lies flat i would then actually no i'm gonna put one more in so that that lies really flat so you can see it when it when it irons so now i want to join these two seams here are you all getting this is this all making sense ladies so i want to put this right sides together to there like that get all those that one out of the way so i can line this one up to here okay can you see so i'm getting this bit here out of the way is everybody still with me are you all still following me with this find that point there through to that point there now i can feel when i put that pin through that that fabric was in the way so i need to make sure that fabric's not in the way there we go again pull down that one there so i can get that one to that one so that point there make sure that's out of the way to where is it I found it there you go on that one there and then one in the center find another pin quickly there we go and then that one in the center and so the y seam itself it's it's this is very easy to put together it's all simple straight line sewing it's just making sure that you're finding those crosses and finding those points that are not sewing into your into your seam allowance and people tend to get really cross about y seams but i think if you're methodical about it they're they're not that difficult to do they're really not so I'll just move all this out of the way make sure that's nice and oh can you see something's moved I'm going to put an extra pin in that one because it's moving there we go so make sure that's out the way get my needle under there right on that cross where is it 
Here it is, got it. <laughs> Couldn't see it for a second. If you've got one of those open toed feet, you know, on your machine where it's completely open at the front, that really helps with this. I should have thought about it and put it on really. Here we go. Not in that one. Um, everyone says they're following along. You're all okay? Good, good. Um, Gene, Gene asks, what about a free motion zoom class? Oh, right, okay. Now, I'm free motion quilting. Stick me on Daphne and I'm absolutely fine. Stick me on a domestic machine. It's not my forte. I can do free motion embroidery um, I, you know, on the machine, but free motion quilting on the machine, not something I'm... I mean, there are thousands of people out there that are so much better to learn from than me with free motion quilting on your domestic machine. Um, I can certainly go through some basics and all with you, you know, some basic designs and everything, um, but it's not necessarily my, my cup of... Not my cup of tea, because I love it, um, but not necessarily something I'm, I'm very good at. Um, free motion embroidery I love okay now I'm just going to iron this one a second okay and then when I flip it over I can show you how they're going to sit okay so I'm going to iron that one there like that so you can see that that's gone in quite nicely my points are my points are pretty okay there and there when you flip it over like this what you want to do is get them see that one laid nice and flat is get them to lie the seams to lie like that so that one's going one way that one's going that way and it goes nice and flat just there then okay can you see at the moment this one's not which is why that's not not lying flat so that one's going that one in that way that one wants to go which way does it want to go that way there like that okay they will naturally want to go one way or the other and if you've done the hexi manx you'll kind of know that from the back seams that they will naturally want to go one way or the other okay so give that a really good press i'm going to flip that back over and you can see that that's now starting to come together you've got really nice neat points there so that's your y seam okay doing that it's not hard okay people do get a bit mm, about y seams they really do and everyone tends to run a bit scared from them but actually if you mark up your your pieces and really look for those those crosses and pin it and go you know slow and steady they're absolutely fine okay so you would just work across your row and then you would add another row in here okay like that when you when you want to do your little half ones here okay because i need to I, I could cut this off here and use this half to fill in the other end if i wanted to or you can cut yourself some half x's which I'll do with this one, okay? And again, what I would do is I would do them in half and then cut them into half. So we're gonna do exactly like we did beforehand, like that, okay? And then, oh, no, move that one over it. A little bit off there. There we go. Let's go along there, up there, down there, okay? And then you want to cut them in half, point to point. So I've got my long ruler like that we really die and go point to point along the fold like that and just make your halves okay and then that will sit in like that okay and again i would just mark up those lines and then i would sew that edge into that line there and then pivot it and sew that edge into that you know go down there like that you could have add the half on before you do the rows if you want i tend to put them in afterwards i just find it sits better um but i'd sew that one in there and then pivot pivot it and sit it over there okay which is what we did exactly what we did here okay um so that's the the hexi quilt hexagon quilt really big hexes but you could do them like we're saying with the little five inch bit out of the ruler and you could do it with lots of small hexes you know you could if you if you wanted to smaller edges but i love this for a layer cake i like the big patterns i like the fact you see them it goes together very very quickly as well when you once you've done your cutting and your drawing actually it's really quick um and that was i think that was half a layer cake that one i think that was half a layer cake so you can imagine layer cake is going to make a nice big throw you could then just add some lovely big borders onto it or do it with two layer cakes if you want a whole bed throw 
um, you know, a bed quilt, but you could just add some nice borders onto it uh, and bind it and quilt it as normal. Okay, so any questions, any other comments there? Please um, do talk to me. What final size would a layer cake make? So if you just sew squares together, okay, a layer cake will make a quilt that's 80 by 60, which is enough to, without a border, to just sort of just go over a double bed. Um, I think we were just saying, so this was, I think this, this wasn't quite a whole layer cake. I think I've still got the rest of it in a box to finish because it's not finished. It is folded over. So what's that going to be? Oh, this. Mm, 24. That one's going to, this one's going to be about 48 by 60, 65 once it's finished. I'll probably put a nice big chunky border on it so it sits across the end of us like a single bed. Um, but yeah, so I mean, when Josh made that quilt for Carrie the other day, that was just double bed size and that was just the squares of a layer cake. Um, you've got nearly four metres of fabric in a layer cake. So just as a, as a reference. <laughs> that was from Carolyn. Thank you, Vic. Um, Aline says, uh, uh, no, not hard, but you have to be very accurate. You do, you do. It's not hard, but you do, but it's good. It's good practice, if nothing else. Um, if you do go over the seam allowance, just unpick it. You know, so say I um, got a little bit cocky and went a bit fast. All I do is literally just unpick those couple. That, like, I mean, I haven't here, I've gone on the point. But if I do forget, because it's so easy to just, you know, when you start getting into the groove of it, just sew right the way down, just go back in and just unpick those couple of stitches. Okay, just so that you've got nothing in your seam allowance. All right. Anything else there? Um, Carol says, really helpful demo, thanks. Cool. Lovely, lovely. Jean says, thanks. And this works with, this method is the same for any Y seams, not just hexagons. You know, anything, so um, when you're doing tumbling blocks, um, that's got a Y seam in it. If you think about the diamond at the top and the two diamonds there, that's a Y seam there. So you can, you know, you can use that for, for any Y seamed block. So that use the same method. Anything else then, no? Uh, thank you from Terry and Sheena. Okay. Lovely, lovely. Fab, right, so I'm going to love you and leave you because I'm going to go and help Sarah baste a couple of quilts and then I'm going to come back over, pack up all my stuff and get in the car and go to uh, go to Peterborough. Well, Oundle, not Peterborough, it's just outside Peterborough. So uh, go and book into the hotel, have a night's sleep and then two busy shows hopefully tomorrow. <laughs> um, and we will see you, I will see you if you, well, Hopefully you'll watch me tomorrow. If not, I will see you back here on Monday. Um, yeah, take care, and everybody. No other questions or anything there? Um, uh, Daphne says, right. can you show us the joins again? Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so just what here, where I've ironed them out. Um, I'll grab a pin in a second. Okay, so I've sewn... If I push this one back, you can see I've sewn from that point there to that point there. Okay, and then on this one... Again, my lines have gone because it was a Frickson pen. There to there. And then when they're joined, can you see that that one kind of sits over that one and it goes nice and flat. So you've got two like that and one just kind of flips over like that. But you'll find that they, they, they do go nice and flat if you iron them the right way. Hopefully that's what you wanted. Yeah. Anything um, else there? Anne says, what time is tomorrow? 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. So, yeah, got two. And it's totally different products on both shows. Got two completely different shows. So, yeah, 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Um, that is right. Oh, I had a panic then. It is 10 a.m. and 1 a.m. Sorry, right, we had a panic last time. We did the wrong times. But, yeah, 10 and 1. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Anything else? Uh, Carol and Kate say, have a good trip. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a new audio book that I've downloaded. Plug in. And off I go. I don't mind the drive though. I quite I quite enjoy driving, so uh, it's uh, it's quite nice and peaceful <laughs> until I start screaming at traffic, and then it's not peaceful in the car at all. <laughs> but I will see you all um, on Monday back here, guys. Uh, take care. Have a lovely, lovely weekend. Bye.